Star Ladder Season 7 Finals, MLG Columbus Drama, and The Real Life Secret Shop Returns. All that and more in this week's Dota 2 Update. Hey guys, it's Jess, and first up, Dota has been killing the game lately. The Star Ladder Series 7 Finals took place over the weekend in Kiev, Ukraine, casted in English by Toby Wan and Statman Bruno. The event was a double elimination best of three, with a best of five for the Grand Finals, among the top four teams from this season's league. Navi, Empire Alliance, and Roxkiss duked it out for the grand prize of $12,000, with the fan favorites Alliance and Navi making it to the Grand Finals, and wait! Is this TI3 again? Because during the best of five, we saw those two play out all five games. And if you don't want me to spoil the winner for you, here's where you want to skip ahead a few seconds. Congratulations, Navi. But besides just a series of impressive matches between some of the most popular teams, Starladder Season 7 pulled in some amazing numbers when it came to viewers. Day one of the finals brought in 200,000 viewers on Western streams alone, and Navi vs Alliance Game 2 reached a peak concurrency of 350,000 viewers. Now this is huge considering everyone was all excited during Star Ladder Season 6 when 76,000 viewers tuned in. Did you guys watch? Leave me a comment below and let me know what you guys thought of Bruno's outfits. I thought he looked snazzy as usual. Next up, MLG Columbus is just under one month away and there's been a little bit of drama, particularly surrounding Take 5, a team composed of Dota 2 vets Demon and Arteezy and newbies to the pro scene Mason, Pandago, and Dark Falco. Take 5 were apparently disqualified from MLG for using stand-ins during one of the NA qualifier matches. Now, According to MLG rules, teams can make changes to their roster prior to their first match, but evidently Take 5 made no such changes yet went on to play the first match with two stand-ins that were not on the registered tournament roster. Aside from the Take 5 disqualification, MLG made some interesting choices when it came to team names. Pretty Boy Swag and Shadow Fiend Eats Cake had to be renamed because the old names weren't professional enough. Now, In hindsight, MLG admitted their fault and going forward their policy will be to only enforce name changes for obvious reasons such as racist or vulgar names. What do you guys think of the naming policy? Now, I thought Shadow Fiend Eats Cake was a pretty awesome name, but Maybe it wasn't the most professional. Anyway, leave me a comment below and let me know your thoughts. In other MLG Columbus news, MLG Adam has confirmed that we will see a secret shop at Columbus. The official list of items for purchase there has not yet been set, but they plan to have a similar merchandise offering as there was at TI3. In fact, Adam has stated that Valve is trying to make MLG Columbus as TI3-like as possible for fans, which is awesome for those of you who couldn't make it out to TI3 due to distance or that ticket situation. Finally, Gamepedia is having a courier giveaway. We're giving away an unusual Oski the Ot Dragon, unusual Lockjaw the Boxhound, and LGG's Golden Skipper. The giveaway will run from this Wednesday, October 16th through Monday the 21st, and you guys, it's so easy to enter. Follow Curse Gamepedia on Twitter and Facebook, and we'll put those links in the description for more info on how to snag one of these awesome couriers. Well, that's all we have for you this week. Be sure to subscribe to Curse Entertainment if you haven't already, and give this video a thumbs up if you want to see more Dota. And I'll see you guys at MLG Columbus. Thanks for watching. Enjoy the game.